السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Welcome to another Quran moment We've reached the 10th day of Ramadan uh, Subhanallah time is passing very quickly Don't ignore any good deed or bad deed Every single deed counts Today I'm going to split the lesson into two parts because it's quite long and this is part one Start by saying the ta'weed A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim We're going to recite ayah number 19 in Surah Al-Baqarah Let's begin with the recitation Aw ka sayyibin min as-samai fihi dhulumatun wa ra'dun wa barqun yaj'aluna asabi'ahum fi adhanihim min as-sawa'iq يجعلون أصابعهم في آذانهم من الصواعق حذر الموت والله محيط بالكافرين Let's go through the meanings أو كصيب من السماء أو or In other words, the example of the منافقين is like the first example or this second example كصيب صيب literally means مطر or rain. Here it's been translated as rainstorm. And I've added the word heavy because all the ulama point out that here sayyib is not just rain like light rain or drizzle, but it's a heavy rainstorm. Minas sama from the sky. So who is this talking about? We're talking about the second example of the hypocrites. And what does the word sama mean? Literally it actually means anything that's above you. Hence a ceiling or saqf is also called a sama. Here, it's translated as a sky in by the translators, um, but in the Mufassirin, they say that this actually means the clouds, because the rain comes from the clouds. So anything that is above your head can be called a sama. And the context tells us what it actually means. Fihi ظُلُمَاتٌ وَرَعْدٌ وَبَرْقٌ Fihi, in it, ظُلُمَات, <coughs> darkness. And remember, we talked about ظُلُمَات before, that this is actually in the plural. But we don't translate it, uh, darkness into darknesses in English because it doesn't sound right. Ra'ad, thunder, wa barq, and lightning. Now, one important point here is that all of these words are in the indefinite. This is fihi dhulumatun and not fihi al-dhulumat. It doesn't say ar-ra'ad or al-barq, the, the darknesses, the thunder or the lightning. And sometimes in Arabic, when you use the indefinite, it's actually used for stress and emphasis. And this is what we're seeing here. So here we're seeing emphasis. What darkness does this refer to? Well, this is an example of some people who are, who are traveling by land and it is, it is night. And that's the first darkness. And they're covered by heavy clouds. That's the second darkness. And there's heavy rain pouring down, and that itself is the third darkness. So there are layers and layers and layers of darkness. What do the thunder and lightning refer to? So you can imagine there's thunder, and they're very afraid because it's an open area of land. The example here, the, the, the thunder, the darkness actually, sorry, I didn't mention here, but the darkness stands for the kufr or disbelief that is inside these hypocrites. They are under layers of darkness. The thunder and lightning, the thunder refers to the warnings and the orders in the Qur'an. And the lightning is the clear arguments of Islam or the light of Islam itself. When they hear this, what do they do? يَجْعَلُونَ أَصَابِعَهُمْ They put, يَجْعَلُون أَصَابِعَهُمْ Their fingers في آذانهم In their ears. So why are they doing that? مِنَ الصَّوَاعِقِ حَذَرَ الْمَوْتِ مِنَ الصَّوَاعِقِ From the thunder, sawa'iq, thunderclap. حَذَرَ الْمَوْتِ In dread of death. حَذَر means to fear. الموت is death. These people, you can imagine them, they're walking on this plain and there's sudden huge rainstorm and light can see lightning, they can hear thunder and then suddenly lightning will come right down and hit the ground, perhaps very near them and they're, they're afraid of the huge sound that's coming. And sometimes sounds, when they're incredible and loud, 
they can harm a person so they're putting their fingers inside their ears trying to block out the noise they think that blocking the sound will save them but in reality of course if you're caught in a thunderstorm uh, blocking the sound does not prevent the lightning from striking you the reality of the affair does not change so this is the example of the hypocrites again so when they hear the Quran they want to try and block it out from their ears so they put they don't they deliberately don't listen and they think if they don't listen then it doesn't matter but it does matter because what's going to happen on the last day is unchanged what does their fear represent their fear and dislike of Islam and how afraid are they to understand how afraid they are we need to actually understand a concept in 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 Arabic and that's an, in language called synecdoche and synecdoche if you look at this thing here it says here what have they put in their ears yaj'aluna asabi'ahum they have put their fingers in the ears but when you block out noise do you put your whole finger in the ear or do you put just the tip of your fingers in your ear you obviously just put the tip of your fingers in your ear so this is called synecdoche when you refer to the part but you mean the whole thing or vice versa so we do this in English as well so example if somebody says I want a head count he's, they say the word head but they don't re literally mean they want you to count the number of heads they mean the head stands for the person the vice versa is sometimes the part stands for the whole in, exam, sorry, example in the Quran وَرْكَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ do rukur with those people who do rukur. Rukur is a part of salah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah says the word rukur but means the whole salah. So this is when a part represents the whole. Then you can have the opposite. When the whole thing is mentioned but what you really mean is just a part. For example, if somebody says to wiki something, you actually mean Wikipedia. A wiki literally is a type of website where users also add to the website and that could be any type of wiki but usually most people mean when they say wiki they use the general word but they mean wikipedia in the same way in this Quranic ayah the word fingers are used but actually what is meant is the part of the finger the fingertip and the purpose of doing this is to emphasize the degree of fear that these people have and the degree of energy they want to put in to not hear Islam so can these people really escape from God? Well the ayah itself concludes. It says, Wallahu muhitum bil kafirin. But Wallah, indeed, Allah, muhit is encompassing, surrounding. Hence the ocean is called a muhit because when you're stuck in the middle of the ocean, you're completely surrounded by it. Bil kafirin is encompassing of the disbelievers. There's no way for them to escape. Note that we've been talking about the munafiqeen, the people on the thing, on, on, on the field, this example that's there and there's lightning and thunder. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say, Wallahu muhituhum, muhituhum. Allah is surround, bil bihim, sorry. Wallahu muhitum bihim. Allah is surrounding them. Instead, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah is surrounding or encompassing the disbelievers. Why this sudden shift of words? This is to emphasize that the reason that these hypocrites are being punished is not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just wants to punish them it's because they have chosen to disregard and disbelieve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who has created them in the first place so here we end with part one I'll just quickly summarize if we take the whole ayah together what's happening so this is the example another example of the believers who are like people or or where there is a heavy rain cloud and war, rain is pouring down minas sama from the sky but here we actually meant, said it meant clouds fihi inside it is dhulumat darkness the darkness of the night the darkness of the rain and and and, and the darkness of the thunder clouds waradun and thunder wa barqun and lightning we said that these represent the darkness represents the disbelief that these people have warad and barq the the thunder are the exagger the the exhortations in the Quran telling people what to do the warnings inside the Quran the barq is the lightning in the Quran the or the nur of Islam yaj'aluna asabi'ahum they put their entire fingers fi adhanihim in their ears min as-sawa'iq because they're afraid of dying from these thunderclaps they're afraid that if they follow the rules of Islam or that something in the Quran will come and expose them Wallahu muhitum bil kafirin, but 
does their putting their fingers in their ears stop them from being exposed does it prevent those people who are on the plane from being hit by lightning no it doesn't there is no escape wallahu muhitun allah surrounds these people and what is the quality of these people that has made allah subhanahu surround them that they are kafirin they are people who have disbelieved in allah and this is the end of part 1 wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin